Hey everybody, Alton here and welcome back to the channel. I'm really excited to share with you today's watch that's been lent into the channel by RUF Watches. When Jamie at Mad Rock Watch Channel asked me if I would be interested in checking this watch out, I said I absolutely would be because my last name is actually R-U-F-F. And so this watch right here is just one letter off from my last name. And I know this it's just kind of a stupid thing, but you know what? I'm kind of a stupid guy and I like stuff like that. So yeah, when this showed up in the mail, I was really excited to find a watch that's named after me. Not really, I guess. So anyways, with that being said, why don't we check this watch out and see if the watch that's named after me is actually any good. So the brand that we're looking at today is a brand called RUF Watches. And RUF stands for Rus Urine Fabric. This is a company that's been around since 2008. I don't know if you're too familiar with this brand, but they've been producing watches since 2008 from Switzerland. And for this company, they have a lot of pride in the fact that everything they do is done in Switzerland. And so we'll see that the watches themselves command a price in accordance with where they're manufactured. For rough watches, you'll find that they don't have a lot of that typical over-marketing stuff going on. They do boast that they are turning traditional luxury watch distribution on its head, which is sort of a regular shtick that we find plays well to the mass market. For us watch collectors, we often just kind of roll our eyes, but I get what they're, they're doing here. They just want to let you know that they are trying to put as much money as they can into the watch while also maintaining honest and fair pricing. So, so that's rough watches. There's a lot more that you can learn on their website if you're interested in that. Now let's look at their collection. They have a number of watches in their collection. They've got their mainstay, which is the RUF 500 Diver. They've got some Pilots watches. I'd actually love to check out this blue one right here. Perhaps in a 42 mil would be really nice, or a 41. But today, the watch that we are looking at is this one right here, the RUF 500. And you can see on their website that they have four different colorways and looks like five different options. They have a, a blue, a green, a black, and then they have a blacked out version looks like either on a rubber strap or on a bracelet. The one that we're looking at today, which is already here on the screen, is this beautiful blue dive watch. Before we go any further, let's look at the dimensions of this watch. It is 44 millimeters wide. It is 53 millimeters long. It's got a 22 millimeter lug opening for replacement straps and bracelets, and it's 14 millimeters thick. So this is a pretty big watch with a lot of presence on the wrist. Taking a closer look at this RUF Diver, we can see that not only is this a big and bold looking watch, it's also a beautiful watch. There's a lot about this Diver to commend itself to a buyer. It has sapphire crystal, a ceramic bezel insert, a helium escape valve, which is something that I will never use, but some people will. And in the back, we have an ETA 2824. So before we go any further looking at the details, we can see that there is a lot on offer with this watch. Right away, one of the things that you're going to notice about this RUF Diver is that blue dial. It's a matte blue dial, and there's a lot of it, but it works really, really well. It is extremely legible. The hour markers, the hands, 
everything just feels solid, but more importantly, if you're a diver, extremely legible. The markers are all applied, which I always appreciate. And I really enjoy the shape of the minute and the hour hands. And I'm a sucker for a lollipop seconds hand, so I'll call this a winner in my book. It has a 120 click unidirectional bezel with a very nice feel to it. Everything is solid, very little back play, if any. It's just a really well designed watch that just seems to work. Looking at the rest of the dial, you'll see there's quite a bit of printing. Automatic helium release valve. 500 meters, 1,640 feet down there at the six. And of course, Swiss made on either side of the six marker. RUF and a little white cross at the 12 o'clock. And the date window is nicely boxed in. There is a metallic ring around the markers as well as the date window, which works well with the surround of the hour and the minute hand as well. The bezel, as we said, has a nice play to it. It's a little thin. It's a coin edge bezel. It might be a little hard to grip if you were wearing dive gloves or, well, I'm Canadian in the winter, regular gloves. <laughs> and uh, I think, however, that it's okay that it's this thin because it really does help keep the profile slimmer. And that's one of the things about this watch is that, and we'll get to that in a, in a few minutes, it wears really well for such a large watch. Well, let's look at the case. The case is almost completely brushed except for a polished edge right here, chamfered edge on the side, giving it just a little bit of bling. Same with the bracelet. The bracelet, although under my lights is quite shiny, it's all brushed, which is something that you want in a tool watch, in a dive watch. You want something that can take a few knocks without scratching so easily. And this is definitely going to get the job done. This watch has been passed around. It is a watch that reviewers have looked at. It's been around North America at least, and it's made its way from Switzerland. It's got a few scratches you might be able to see on camera. There's the helium release valve right there, but it still looks really, really good. So that, I think, commends itself to the choice to brush the case and the bracelet. Let's take a little bit of a closer look at the bracelet itself. Split pins, which makes sizing it super easy. Nice solid links. Milled clasp. It has a double pusher, which I find works really well. And of course the fold over clasp to wrap up the whole package. Now sized up for my eight inch wrist, you can see that it suits me very, very well. And one of the things that I really appreciate about this RUF Diver is that it, it feels like a slimmer watch than it actually is. It feels slimmer than its 14 millimeters would suggest, and it really hugs the wrist extremely well. There's a couple links left in the box, so if you had a bit of a bigger wrist, I have an 8 inch wrist, if yours is 8.5 or 9, you'll probably do okay. And there's three micro adjusts in the clasp as well, so if you're wrist swells during the day, or you just want to get that perfect fit, you can use that to snug it up just the way you want it. If you aren't too familiar with a helium escape valve, basically what it is, is a spring-loaded valve that when you are in the decompression chamber after a deep sea dive, will allow the helium to escape your watch so the crystal doesn't pop out, which I think we can all agree is a good thing. On the other side, we have the crown, which is an oversized crown, which I always like. It's not signed, but it, it sort of has a radial pattern that plays in the light, which is kind of nice. And it is super easy to grip. When you unscrew the crown, it 
pops out quite nicely. Hacks, of course, date change in the middle, and then to screw it back in, super, super easy. Now on the back of this watch, we can see an ETA 2824. It's not decorated or anything. It's a very basic Swiss movement, but it's a great basic Swiss movement. It's the kind of movement that's going to be within basically two to five seconds a day for most people if the watch is running well. At least that's been my experience over the years. And although it isn't the prettiest, it definitely gets the job done. It's reliable. It keeps great time. It's easy to service. And they're becoming more and more rare in micro brands outside of the Swatch Group. So this might be one of your last chances to get an ETA 2824. Again, I'm not an industry insider by any means, but that's the word on the street. In terms of loom, the Rough Diver glows pretty brightly. Now, I'm in a room with the lights off. It's daylight. The curtains are drawn, but it's still pretty bright in here. I mean, I could easily read a book, and you can see that these indices are glowing quite well. But really, it's the hands that, that are the stars of this show. The hour and the minute hands really seem to have a good amount of loom. It doesn't say on the website what kind of loom, but it must be some kind of Swiss loom because everything they do, they boast Swiss. So we're assuming it's some kind of C3 or something. Anyway, they boast that it is an eight hour lumination. So if you set it down on your nightstand, you should wake up and see that it is at least glowing faintly. I myself haven't tested this theory, but I do know that at four in the morning for that odd bathroom break, I have noticed that it is glowing on the nightstand quite well. So really quickly, I just wanted to give you a sense of the size of this watch. Here we have a Dan Henry 44 millimeter. And so these two you can see are a bit on par. But with the Dan Henry, it doesn't seem quite as big, at least not in person, because it has that inner rotating bezel, which sort of draws the eye inward, and it has a smaller diameter. And then we have the Seiko Monster, which is around 42 millimeters, give or take. Of course, the rough is 44. And then maybe this would be a comparison that works for a lot of people. This is a standard SKX 007, which is a 42 millimeter. And you can just see that it is so much smaller visually than the Rough Diver. So I wanted to show you this, not because it's a negative, but because if you are looking for a watch, I know that size is one of the most important factors in terms of wearability. So I think this comparison might be helpful for you. So having spent some time with the RUF 500 Diver, I can say that it's a really, really nice watch. It's a bit of a beauty and a beast. It's very good looking. It's, it's brushed, but yet it seems to sparkle, especially with that bezel insert. The, the glass will reflect the light in, in good ways. It's still extremely legible. It's just a very pretty legible watch, but it's also a beast. I mean, it's extremely well built, extremely well made. It's tough, it's rugged, it's, it's large, that's for sure. So yeah, I would say that if you're in the market for a Swiss watch, if you're in the market for a larger watch, if you need a watch that can go 500 meters, uh, not me, not my thing, but of course that wouldn't prevent me from boasting about my 500 meter watch, then this just might be the watch for you. This is a really, really nice watch. Now the question is, is it worth the price? And of course that's the question that most people ask when they come to a video like this. Well, honestly, there is a lot of competition at this price range and you'll just have to choose for yourself if it stacks up against it all. As for me, I'm really glad that I had the opportunity to check out this rough watch. So I'd like to thank Jamie over at Mad Rock for organizing it so that I could get a look at it. And I'd like to thank RUF Watches 
for allowing him to ship it on my way. I know there's a number of other people that have reviewed this watch on this tour, so I will copy and paste and link down in the description for you so you can check those out from channels far better than mine if you're interested in another person's opinion. Well, that's it for me today. I'd like to thank you for watching. I'd like to ask you to like and subscribe if you want to. I'm not your dad. <laughs>